Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Taft City Council Successor Agency Joint Regular Meeting for Tuesday, January 19, 2016, here at Taft City Hall. Please check your cell phones and put them on vibrate or <coughs> mute. I appreciate that very much. Um, we'll start out with the uh, Pledge, Pledge of Allegiance uh, by, uh, led by Councilman Bryant and the Pledge of Allegiance, I mean, the invocation. I haven't been here for a month. I'm kind of stumbling out. I'm sorry. Um, and our invocation will be tonight by Pastor Rodney Wyckoff of the West Church of the Nazarene, West Hills Church of Nazarene. Y'all stand. stand. Take your hats off, please. Please join me. Salute our nation's flag. Salute. Pledge. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Individual with liberty and justice for all. Pastor Dear Lord, we gather this evening. We're thankful for the rain we've received today. As we come into this place to conduct the city's business, our prayers are for all those in our community and for their livelihoods. Our prayer is for their comfort and their safety. We pray for uh, your provision in each life. We know that there are challenging times for some, and we pray for your sustaining grace in their lives. We pray for our council members this evening as they conduct the business, that you would guide and direct their decision-making, help them as they approach different issues, Lord, that they would have the wisdom they need as they uh, consider each item. We thank you for the great city of Taft that we have the privilege of living in. We thank you in your name. Amen. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Mr. Bryant, thank you. Uh, Madam Clark, will you take roll call, please? Yes. Mayor Miller? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Noor? Here. Council Member Cryer? Here. Council Member Bryant? Here. And Council Member Hill? Hill. Here. <laughs> <laughs> She's having trouble too. Yeah. Uh, I popped out that way. <laughs> uh, our first uh, item agenda is a public hearing transit fare increase in route change. And there's some po folks that have signed up for our regular public comment section. We will have time during the public hearing section for you to be able to speak if you wish. So, uh, <coughs> Mr. Jones. Thank you, Mayor. In 2015, the Council adopted the new Transit Development Plan. The plan outlined steps the city needed to take to remain compliant with state and federal regulations which fund the local transit. The plan recommends a rate increase as well as the consolidation of two fixed routes into a single route. Additionally, there will no longer be fixed route offered on the weekend, but a dial route service would instead be offered to all riders Friday through Sunday. Transit fares help offset a portion of the cost of providing transit services, which are highly subsidized through a variety of state and federal sources. In order to receive state and federal funding for transit operations, the Taft Area Transit Fare Box revenue is required to cover at least 10% of the total transit operating expenditures. Currently, the fare box ratio of revenue to expenditures is at 5.83 for dollar ride service and 4.02 for the fixed route. Um, I'd also like to point out um, there's a letter here with 64 um, signatures in opposition to the rate increase for seniors. Give that to the city clerk and have that read into the, <coughs> the minutes. Okay, uh, the recommended action at this time is to conduct a public hearing, so I'll uh, open a public hearing and any, invite anybody wishing to come forward in favor of this uh, uh, motion to increase rate changes. Seeing none, then I will invite folks to come forward who are opposed. And I'll just, if it's okay, I'll just go down the Rick, uh, list here, and we have Rick Connick. <coughs> when you come to the podium, will you state your name and your address, please? Rick Connick, 119 Harrison Apartment B. I'm here on the, for the riders actually in South Taft as well as in Ford City. As this council knows, I have been riding this transit since June of 1992. I am one of the longest riding transit 
writers that you guys have had in this city. I am right now going to speak on behalf of the, the kids that we have in South Taft. We have multiple kids that ride this transit to and from school every single day. I personally buy on an excess of five bus passes a month so that my son can get to and from school without having to cross Wood Street and take the chance of getting hit. If I may use this map over here, I will show you guys something. If you all can hear me, they're proposed. We can hear you, Rick. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you straight up. Oh, I'm okay. at it, and you okay. all are going to hear it. Okay. Because you're all opening yourselves up for a major lawsuit. And I'll tell you one reason why. These kids get hit walking across Wood Street to catch this transit in the fog or because these speeders on Wood Street, we're all going to come back on this board. If you notice on this, their proposal is coming from Kmart up Main Street, down Second, back over. Their proposal is to come across Crystal, GP, and back to Wood. The way it is now, there is one transit stop on the south side of Wood Street, which is GP, which is Eastern and Vienna Vista. Take that stop out. You will guys want to. You guys want to stop the transit? You guys might as well, because you're not going to have the kids riding this transit. Furthermore, I live in Ford City. I have to walk a quarter of a mile to a half a mile to catch the transit. I have sent numerous, numerous letters right here to 209 East Kern Street to the transit, because both transits should be stopping at Save-A-Lot. They're not. Route 1, the closest one to Harrison and Birch is where I'm at. Route 1, the closest place it stops is at the college. Route 2 is save a lot. You guys yell that you want seniors riding? Seniors want to be able to get on this bus besides using dial a ride. People are on fixed incomes in this town. The economy in this town is down. Dave will contest for that. Everybody on this council knows the oil prices are down. Oil prices are down. People aren't working. Without working, no money. If you guys want to raise the rates, you guys are kicking yourselves in the teeth. If you want to take Buena Vista and Eastern out, you guys are opening yourselves up. Because we have kids that can't walk from South Taft to Roosevelt Lincoln. There's people up there that don't have cars. This is the only means of transportation. Think of this foul weather we're having. Think of the fog. Think of the traffic. You guys take it out. You guys are crazy, all of you. And I'm talking to Randy. I'm talking Dave. Talk to Mr. Carr, Mr. Bryant, Ms. Hill. You take this stop out. There's nothing on the south side of Wood Street. None. Then what are you guys going to do? You guys don't live in that area. We got kids in that area. We got grandkids in that area. You know, most of you guys, Dave, I know you live down the airport edition. You, I believe, lives up in Taft Heights. You know, all you guys has got cars. These kids up there, some of the families up there are on low income, don't have cars. This is the only means that they got to go to school. You guys want to pay, you guys want to pay for a taxi for them? Don't think so. So you guys need to take that into account the safety of our kids. Myself, I don't give a damn. But when it comes to my son, I do. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> we have uh, the next speaker is Kathy Johnson. Kathy, will you step forward, please? I'm Kathy Johnson. I live at 128 Center Street in Taft, and I work at the Westside Community Resource Center, and that's um, who I'm representing tonight. First of all, we want to, um, we're really happy that you've changed the transit plan to a single route, because the, the two routes was, we had a really difficult time with our clients explaining it to them and having them access it. Most of our clients 
that use the transit would um, do the dial a ride because they just it just never was a good flow for them so we're really happy about that um, we're really concerned about the increase uh, 90 percent of our clients at the resource center don't drive so they either walk or they take public transportation i think with the single route i think you're going to see an increase of people that ride the transit i'd like to um i would i would prefer having it go right now it's going about once every 45 minutes i'd rather see it go once an hour and add a few more stops there's a there's a place where it goes down a street and then it goes down gray over to um to the rec department can i show you please mm -hmm. We're just very concerned about the cost. We do provide transit tickets for our clientele to get to doctor's appointments and um, other things. Okay, the, the cost currently for a general ridership is a dollar. Yes. And we're proposing to go to a dollar fifty. What is your proposal? I'd like to see you hold off on the rate increase and see but, if but this. Our, our issue here is we're supposed to meet 10% fare box and we're only meeting 5%. So how do we get more people to get on for a buck? If we don't, then we have to cre increase it for the people who are using it to a buck and a half to get to the 10%. So you, we're in a quandary here. We're, we're, we've got to do something or we're going to lose funding altogether and we won't have a bus system at all. I think that with the single route, you're going to have an increase in ridership. I think that's one thing that will increase the fares and because I did call the I, I did talk to was it Christy I did talk to her today and she explained that it needed to be 10 percent of the cost that it needed to be absorbed by the the fares but I think if if you if you do the single route and you have it maybe advertise it in different ways I think you'll see that the amount of people riding it will increase I know I'd be more likely to write it because I just I couldn't understand it I have an education <laughs> I couldn't understand it I'd look at the route the map and I just go what and that was our whole office trying to explain it to uh, our clients we just didn't get it we never got the the two routes so this is really simple simplified and I would I would I would prefer like just every hour on the hour that you knew that every hour on the hour or 15 minutes after or 20 minutes after that bus is going to be at that same spot that's easily understood and i think that's what we need is something that's very easily understood <coughs> okay <coughs> well thank you very much uh third uh we have olivia goldwin and she uh gave us a written statement and I you want me to read that or you would you like to speak She's gonna read it, Mayor. Oh, okay thank you so Olivia will you state your name and your address please I'm uh, I'm Olivia Goldwyn and I live in the Taft College uh, the new till dorms okay. 29 Cougar Court thank you. it has uh, come to my attention that uh, tat that tat plans on raising their prices merging routes and changing the times when fixed route or dial a ride will be functional. I may not like the I may not know like the exact full picture as to why aside from spending more than what they make. It's like I feel like the scheduling and prices are a little unreasonable. It's like I'm a student I'm a student with a limited budget and I have to use and I am with my new job I have to use TAT to get to work. And a person like myself with a disability should not have to break their budget just 
to be able to go to places that are not exactly safe to walk to, like my workplace, and or need to be at. And as a whole, it was it was it. I don't. I feel that the proposal was not well thought thought out enough, especially with those that are for those without sufficient means of funding. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to say? I. I. Thank you. All right. Thank you. That's very well done. Uh, Bill Messinger, are you speaking on PAP? Okay, so we'll put you off on public comments later. Anybody else wishing to speak on this issue? <coughs> Seeing none, I will close the uh, public hearing and I'll entertain a motion to approve transit rate increases and change the transit route. Motion. Second. Okay, we have a motion second, so the council has uh, time for discussion. Mr. North. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First off, before anybody jumps to any conclusion, if you do not make a motion in a second, then you cannot discuss the issue. So, save your pies and your rotten tomatoes until after we discuss this. All right? Secondly, I don't know if everybody here who's commenting on this is aware of it, but there was quite a bit of outreach that took place through the course of this community where people were invited to be a part of the democratic process. Don't shake your head, because in point of fact, okay. that's true. Okay, well, we worked hard. We cannot go to every single residence and knock on your door and wait until you finish doing your hair or leave the restroom and see to it that we hand it to you. Mr. Connick, Mr. Connick, I'll ask you to refrain from yelling out. You had your, your time. We have our time now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, as I was saying, anything that takes place through the course of this city, in this city, just like any other municipality, there is outreach because government is all of you, everybody here. This is a subsidized program in the city of Taft and Ford City, unincorporated Taft. I mean, somebody else is paying for the bulk of it, and it comes with rules. Any grants program, anything like that comes with rules. The rule about this particular program and the funding for this program is that the fare box <laughs> contributes 10% minimum. We have not met that minimum. There were studies done and in order to try to keep the service for the people of this community, including you and your grandchildren and school kids and you young lady, in order to keep it here in the city and keep it operating, we have got to meet that. We have got to meet that 10%. We worked very hard cutting the cost on the operations side. Unfortunately, when you see this, you only see the cost on the income side. We, we used a balanced approach, I assure you. And we, have, we will deal with issues regarding the unions because of changing some of the jobs related to this. But the fact of the matter is, at the end of the day, if we do not reach that 10% fare box, the entire program will disappear. There will be nothing to discuss because none of the funding will be here. All right, the jobs won't be here, the, the buses will not be here, the routes won't be here, and it will not matter. Anytime you put a program like this in place, it is a compromise. It would be nice if there was sufficient funding out there such that there would be public transit that would meet everybody's individual schedule. People wouldn't have to wait and they wouldn't be inconvenienced. But that is not going to happen anytime soon, not until unicorns fly. So we have to try to work very hard to work and help everybody. And compromise is exactly what government is, is a compromise. So the fact that you came here to address the council, that means you're part of government. That's good. I, I wish you would have addressed the issues when the outreach took place. We're going to have to do something. You think uh, that with the changing of the route, perhaps there'll be a greater ridership. So we would, in, uh, we, would, we would have greater income based on that. We don't know that. I don't know, and I would have to ask city manager, perhaps, what is, what is our cutoff date? What point in time are we going to lose the funding? 12 months from now, 18 months, two years? If we don't meet that 
We're already, we're, we are already losing a portion of our funding currently. We are currently losing a portion of our funding. As we lose portions of that funding, then the costs go up, the stops drop down, and the employees drop down, so the convenience also becomes less and less convenient. We're there right now. We have got to balance the books, people. We've got to find that balance somewhere. And nobody up here wanted to do it to anybody out there, I assure you. But what we really don't want to do is be sitting up here when this place is full of people and you're all asking, how did you all let this happen? How'd you let it happen? Now we have no transit at all. Shame on you. We don't want that either. So we are forced to do something. To do nothing is to ensure it disappears for perpetuity. It will be gone. All right, so I hope I've helped you understand why we're here, why we had to talk about it, why we reached out and asked everybody for input. It's an inconvenience, but it's necessary inconvenience because the alternative is hugely inconvenient for everybody involved. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Crocker. Thank you, Mayor. I wish we had this here sooner. We went to the workshops and discussed the changes with the best routes and the needs and stuff. If you're all input into it. Um, I, well, I've noticed on a couple of speakers here that um, a, cha a change your route a little bit may help a little bit, not bring ridership in there. Is there, is there a way we can tweak it a little bit that would help, uh, Craig? That we, we can do the tweak well, there's been a it? great deal of thought and study that's went into it from the transit uh, staff looking at areas where we had routes originally that no, mm -hmm. one, no one was ever there. Um, so knowing what they know from the areas where people are picked up and people giving input by saying, I have to walk f four blocks to get here, they adjust the routes. So um, if there is a need, it hasn't been um, properly uh, related. related to transit, but um, the route changes and the bus stops, we can look into those. Um, uh, some information was given to us tonight, staff's here to take those down. So it doesn't mean <clears throat> that a, a route change necessarily has to come back to the city council at a public hearing. Mm -hmm. if, uh, if we can find there's truth in some of these things that are being told to us tonight, and it's not just one person that needs us to be closer to their house, um, then we can do those things. So, uh, 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 Mr. Caffey Johnson was mentioning about the A Street corridor or something like that. Something to be yeah, able, we can uh, look into that. Look into. The one thing that's uh, problematic for the hourly uh, thing every hour is uh, we have time stops. And if you look at this very small writing, you can barely see there's various bus stops in, in the city. And you can't have a bus stop there every hour on the hour because they're, they're making their loops around. So it might be. Uh, 9:38 a.m. at one, 10:12 at the other. So there's really no uh, way to just say a bus will come by at this stop every hour. There's certain routes could be like um, like on certain days for the need city uh, center when they're open or now are they open? Are they open every day or are they open like a couple of days during the week? Maybe on the days they're scheduled to be open in that area there may have a. There's bus stops there's close to there. there. Mm -hmm. um, it's well the whole, we've had the a whole lot of thing we're trying to do is make this convenient for people yeah. to increase ridership so I, I'm assuming uh, that once we set a route it's not set in stone for yeah. you know we can change it at will I, I am I right about that yeah, we have so, you know whatever works or works better this is a proposal but even if we were to approve it tonight we, we get some more input we could we could change the routing now, that, that, that goes into a whole lot of paperwork that we'd have to have to do and uh, brochures or anything that we're producing that's showing the old map and having a new map so there's some costs involved in that so um, but we want to make it right for, for everybody because so. what I'm seeing right now five percent or five point four percent ridership we have done here have to double our ridership in order to meet meet the goal yeah. at the present cost of a dollar per ride or, or the old the old system we had to double it we're at a uh, dollar fifty cent increase single issue ticket versus a trip pass. There's still be a, a dollar. This is almost the same cost by buying a trip pass 
passes almost pretty much the old cost by, by multiple passes. But um, I was trying to find like a compromise if we were like say for a temporary three months period or for a six month period if we can go maybe 25 cents and see how it does um, uh, increase the ridership and make the changes that the people here you know, the, the, the put some skin in the game. They put some skin in the game. We could increase the ridership, maybe twenty-five percent for six months, and increase it if you need to, or, or or keep it the same and hold it at, at twenty-five cents. And that's that's council decision, mm -hmm. Mr. Bryant. Uh, Mr. Conic, I want to. Uh, I appreciate you coming out. Uh, but one thing I want to make sure you're clear on is that you touched that when oil's down, the economy's down locally. People without jobs and money as a whole is down. I want to make sure you know that applies to city hall as well. Sales tax Can revenue. Right uh, you can feel my, free to come up. My address, the biggest concern for me is you guys taking the Buena Vista Eastern stop out. But we're going to look at that. That's the only one I really care about other than hers. Understand, sir. Because, you know, because that's where my kids and grandkids get off. Absolutely that's understand. Get back and forth to school because please, school please, please sit down. My question, uh, okay. based on the map, it, it doesn't appear that we actually have a stop on that street. Is that yes. correct? Okay, but it's just not shown there. I apologize for that because that, that just seemed like we were adding one. It didn't seem like they were taking one away. Um, I think everybody's touched on this, but we the state has got to be able to pay for itself to some extent. It's either that or you see these, the gentleman who's in the back corner in the police uniform. We're going to have one. Oh, he's over here now. We're going to have one or two less of those guys running the streets if we're going to subsidize the program. And I totally understand and I sympathize, but we've got to make a choice. This thing's either got to be there, it's got to be self sufficient to some extent, or it's not going to be there at all, or we have to take other services <coughs> that the city provides paving roads, having uh, uh, safety, uh, or just having general public works. We're, we're not going to be able to have it all. We have to make a choice uh, one way or the other. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Hill. Well, Mr. Connick, I am concerned about your children's safety as I'm concerned about all the children's safety. If you feel that there's something there that the City Hall is missing, calmly, please, let us know what that might be. At this point, I don't know exactly where this bus stop is that you're referring to and what exactly we're taking away. And I'm assuming there's more children than just yours that are taking this stop. If you could possibly get those names and get the amount of children that are possibly using that stop that you think is being eliminated, let City Hall know. Perhaps we can make sure it's still in there. Because believe me, your children's safety is very high on my concerns. That's all I'm asking. And that's, like I said, all we want to know is who and how many. Let City Hall know, and we'll see if we can't find a way to make sure your kids get to school safe. That's, believe me, we want to make sure your kids are safe. That's important to all of us. Thank you. That's all I'm asking. Okay. Uh, Mr. Connick, I'm going to ask you for Marie to refrain from making any more comments during the council session or I'm going to have to ask you to leave. You understand that? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Do we get count, uh, funds from the county for the transit? Uh, transit? Uh, trips originated, originating in the county areas are subsidized by the county, yes. Okay, Le Mr. Connick. Okay, if you will listen please. I asked the question of whether the county provides funding and Mr. Jones has stated that we do get funding from the county for trips originating in the county. So uh, what do we know what part of the budget that is? Well, they Ca county funds, I mean, 10%, 20%. Oh, um, I don't know. Uh, it's probably a third. Probably a third of okay. So I was un unaware of that. The rest of it we get from and the state or the do same situation we are. They get the fare box ratio and they pay the operation side. Right. So basically they're no different than us. It's on a larger scale. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a question that we're increasing fares, what about if we decrease fares? Would that spur um, uh, ridership? And I, I don't know if that's worked in the past or not. Uh, but um, well, well, that's not going to help our situation. We've, we've, we, tried we need every, we've tried everything in the playbook since 2008 that I'm aware of yes. to try not to have any uh, increases. And anything and everything we've done has not increased our ridership. So, um, like uh, Councilman Knorr pointed out, we've worked hard to reduce our operations cost, our maintenance cost. 
um, this is the last thing in our playbook to fix the problem because we didn't want to increase the rates for anybody. And we really didn't want to increase it for the uh, <coughs> folks with disabilities or our seniors. And the last time we increased? I believe it was 2008. So it was seven, our last seven years and we have not had a rate increase. We have not had an increase in ridership and our costs are kind of steadily, um, not hugely, but steadily going up every year. They go up and, I mean, the Just one thing that goes up and down is salaries. fuel, but everything else goes up. Yeah. Um, these buses require a lot of maintenance. We go through a lot of brakes and a lot of tires. Well, at this time, our fuel's in a better situation, but there was a long time there that uh, uh, fuel was pretty high. Um, on and I want to echo Mr. Jones, we've done everything uh, in the city to control our costs on the transit because I've been on the council, uh, Mr. North's been on the council for a long time. We've been worried about this, uh, as he had said, for years that um, we may lose it if we don't increase fares. I mean, it's just as simple as that. We have to meet a 10% fare box. And that's just like the county transit system. They have to do the same thing. Same thing with the get in Bakersfield. They have to have the Actually, same thing. Actually, they have to have higher because they are, uh, we're rural. So we're only held to a 10%. They're held to a 20%. 20% for, for, for the metro West. Metropolitan bus systems, 20% fare. Yeah, so we're doing everything that we can. And nobody likes to increase any kind of fees or fares or taxes or whatever it is but we have to do something and or it's gonna it's just gonna run itself in the ground and we'll have job losses and we will have uh, a whole bunch of inconvenienced inconvenienced uh, citizens so um, we're open to you know better ideas <coughs> um, publicity uh, however you can get your friends and neighbors get anybody to jump on the um, uh, transit buses. Uh, we would be willing to look at uh, routing. I, I do not appreciate, and I don't think that this council appreciates the uh, specter of children's death hanging over the top of us uh, in our decision making. Uh, so I, I, I take offense at that, uh, Mr. Connick. So uh, we're, we're more than reasonable, and we understand your concern, uh, and we have the same issues. So um, we, uh, I would propose that we might make a compromise in two things. One, uh, to increase the senior rate to a dollar instead of a dollar twenty-five, the ADA rate from seventy-five cents to a dollar, and that we uh, continue to meet with citizens and concerned folks. Uh, and looking at the stops and where they should be in, in our routing. So, um, I second that motion. We have a motion, so it would be an amendment. A motion to amend to your. So we have a motion to amend. Yes, second to And second amend. We have any further discussion here on this? So do I? I made the original motion. Do I need to amend my motion? We have an, um, a motion and a second. I believe it's been amended. It's, it's been amended. amended. Yes. And, and just so I'm clear on this, that was the two rates, Mr. Mayor, that, yes. that you suggested, yes. as well as we had two suggestions from people in staff the audience. Will, staff will look into, staff the, uh, will look into those, those requested down, route changes, especially if it's going to be a safety. If we can increase ridership, we can revisit the... Um, fair issue too. Uh, what goes up doesn't mean it can't come back down. As so. a suggestion, you may want to consider keeping the uh, public input, uh, <coughs> public hearing open for another two weeks um, since it seems to be on people's mind and uh, that'll give staff a chance to look at the, the uh, routes. And, uh, so not take action tonight is what you're uh, saying? So we would table it, is that what you're saying? Continue the public hearing so. until uh, the next meeting, and then we'll continue the okay, so testimony. Okay, so what we're proposing to do here is to continue this public hearing for another two weeks so that we can get some calm, collected, good ideas, some 
route changes that we might be beneficial uh, times whatever um, from the public so you know we'll be on uh, TV here in the next couple of days so hopefully people will be able to see the meeting and know that we're looking to have some input so if you have some comments we, we would appreciate written comment but you're more than welcome to come down to City Hall and, and ask to meet with staff um, but you, we would appreciate uh, written comments uh, would, would be a preferred way and you contact our city clerk here at City Hall Mr. Epperson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. What I would suggest is that we actually do a motion to reopen the public hearing in two weeks because it was officially closed. Make that motion. Oh, Second. yeah, we did close it. Huh? Yes. Second. 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 Well, motion to reopen. So what we're doing, so the, motion, the two motions that we had were kind of yep. set aside. We're asking for a... Um, a motion to continue this matter Continuous. until the next city council meeting in, I believe, two weeks. I don't know the date offhand, along with reopening the public hearing at that time. I'll entertain that motion. I'll second that motion. 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 I don't care where it goes. It's it's where it's that motion. So, in, and also in that motion, we, we uh, discard the two motion prior. Correct. Okay. So, three things in that motion. Do we, we all agree on that? Yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. All right, Madam Clerk, will you take roll call? Yes, Council Member Knorr? Yes. Council <coughs> Member Pryor? Yes. Council Member Bryant? Yes. Council Member Hill? Yes. And Mayor Miller? And I vote yes. So thank you so much for your input tonight. We appreciate it. Hopefully, uh, we'll hear your comments and we'll get this thing right. Keep riding them buses. <laughs> if we see a double increase in ride. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're moving on to item number two. Citizens request for public comments. This is a time and place for the general public to address the city council on matters within its jurisdiction. State law prohibits the council from addressing any issue not previously included on the agenda. Council, excuse me, council may receive comment mm -hmm. and set the matter for a subsequent meeting. Please limit comments to five minutes. Uh, we have Bill Messenger, he wants to speak on homeless. Mr. Messenger? You'll state your name and your uh, address, please. <coughs> My name is Bill Messenger. Uh, I live at 613 Taylor. Um, I actually have a business here at 531 Center Street, which is why I'm here. Um, I've noticed over probably the last six months or so that we've had a lot more instances with homeless people in our area. Um, I come into work in the morning, they're asleep on the park bench in front of my shop. Um, I'm trying to do business with customers in front of the shop. They're kind of hanging around right where we're at. Um, we had a vehicle that was broken into on our lot that was a customer's vehicle. The, it happened on a Sunday morning. Monday morning a homeless person was out there who matched the description of what was given on the person that broke into the truck. He was out there with a big wad of keys trying to get into the truck. Uh, we called Taft PD. They came up. They talked to him for a few minutes. The cop basically came back told me oh, I took his keys away from him. He's fine now. So kind of nothing happened. They um, took the keys away from him? Is that what you key, Yeah, the guy had a wad of keys and he was trying to get into the truck. And I was told that he, they took his keys away from him, so he's no longer a problem. So, I mean, I've had customers, female, elderly, elderly customers, pull up to the shop, call me inside the shop because they wouldn't get out of their vehicle and walk into the shop because they're hanging out in front of the shop. They're running up and down the alley behind the shop, yelling and screaming and doing all kinds of stuff. Um, I'm not the only person that's had problems with them. You know, uh, there's been other little things, but I can't bring them all to mind right now. So I just wanted to bring it to attention that we are starting to see a problem. I drove by on a test drive, that little area that they've got on 5th Street where the bathrooms are, that there was probably eight or nine of them hanging there. So I know there's probably not people wanting to go ride that transit because of that reason. So I just wanted to bring it to the attention. Well, uh, <laughs> might remember even though they're homeless they have rights too well and, i understand and that. 
but you have rights and right. we all have rights everybody has rights so um, continue con contacting the police department um, they will res respond and we can just move them along but all they're going to do is go down and get in front of somebody else's place we can't just go down put them on a bus and ship them out of town I mean that's it, we can't do those kinds of things uh, most likely why um, he was not arrested is there's that nine hundred fifty dollar issue of damage whether they can be arrested or not or given a ticket and cited and released mm -hmm. that would be so, assembly bill 109 you can yeah. thank your legislators yeah. for yeah. that so uh, there around. used to be used to be 50 bucks so we, for 50 bucks we could we could do something and they could you know go down and spend a little time in a pokey right but, i uh, just figured that if i we, came down sorry i just figured if i came down and brought it to the attention you know if we start bringing seeing more and more that we can actually start maybe <coughs> developing a program to do something about it if, if I may, may I interject, Mr. Mayor? Sure. I, I can tell you, sir, that I see that all the time. Mm -hmm. And one weekend, the city manager, I know, on his own time, uh, witnessed uh, a gathering of those individuals and put a plan in place to, to get them to move along and to dismantle their impromptu condominium. And, and make it a little less comfortable for them we also did that by clearing out sandy creek that was not just an environmental issue mm -hmm. uh, but we were eliminating their habitat and uh, we worked very hard to do that and and trust me when i say not only do i appreciate you coming before this council and expressing that frustration but that frustration uh, is shared by everybody up here in, in point of fact i'm sure everybody in the city and it's not just the city of Tap. And it is unfortunate yeah. but uh, like the mayor says we cannot violate their civil rights and right. so we have to work within the boundaries of the law and that That's can be I mean, you know, a very it, frustrating place yeah it's, it's getting you know I, I'm sure all of us are getting comments and mrs. Hill is in business and she has her run-ins with them mm -hmm. too um, and some come and some go and, and it depends on the economic times and you know some, a lot of them are come here because they have relatives here then they the relatives kick them out and then we have these kind of issues so you know uh, there's maybe some point in time we need to have a summit with business owners city chamber school whoever else recreation district whoever else that might have some interest or involvement in this and so we can maybe I mean every community is having these same kind of issues mm -hmm. and it's it, it does seem like it's it's getting worse it's one thing to be homeless but it's one thing else to be a burglar or right. a breaking into cars or stealing or defecating uh, wherever they please and those kinds of things so when it becomes that kind of issue then you know we have to be dependent upon our law enforcement to to handle those kinds of issues mm -hmm. so uh, we thank you um, and just all we can do is uh, keep reporting on it Ms. Hill yeah if I may um, being that I have a business on Center Street, I actually, uh, Mr. Messinger and I witnessed an event where we had a lot of verbal action going on behind our businesses. You know, it's, it's hard enough to get people to come to Center Street to support our businesses, but when they are concerned about their welfare, they will not come. Um, we do have a bigger problem. It is getting messier. What's going on behind the bathrooms? I do not have a public bathroom in my business, and when people want to use the restroom, I refer to them to go to behind to the where the park is behind my store um, they don't want to go there and that's not you know again we have a problem I do not want to make light of the plight of a homeless person I realize that this is a bad situation we also have some mentally very mentally disturbed people that are walking around the streets and I realize that the police are they're, they're stuck with this they cannot put them in places they can let themselves out you know we have a couple of girls that are walking down the street they should not be walking <coughs> down the streets but unfortunately we can't do anything about them but we can make a, a stronger police presence. I know you guys work hard. Believe me, I know you do. But I have on more than one occasion called the police department having the dispatchers say, you know, they're busy. I know you're busy. But we do need to have the perception that you will be available to us. When somebody says, well, they'll get there when they can get there. That's not, the, that's not what I want to hear when I have somebody in front of my store that's, that is upsetting my clientele. 
Mm -hmm. So if we can find a way to have a summit, have a workshop, we need to have people have a perception that there's a more of a police presence. If on your way home, you could just drive down Center Street, drive down our alleys. Behind Personal Style, they have an area mm -hmm. back there where the homeless are doing their laundry. And they're doing their laundry all across the fence and they're defecating and urinating in their, that back area. So bad, in fact, that the smell is coming through their business. Um, the Bank of America next to me, I have had, I've caught more than one person back there using it as a restroom. It's not pretty. Uh, I just, we just need to, you know, we need to feel like more is happening, and I realize mm -hmm. there are limitations. But yeah, it's there's another thing, too. It, you know, criminal activity is one thing. Mm -hmm. Threatening is quite another issue, and the police department can do something about threat. So if you're, <laughs> if you're threatened verbally or, or physically, uh, that's, that's, becomes a, a big big issue right. so uh, hopefully that won't come to that but some of these folks are very vocal like and if you feel threatened that's when we call the police department right. and uh, they yeah. right now like said, right now it's only out there and you're doing the right thing but by calling and don't feel like you're you know a pest or something mm -hmm. because it's your oh. right and our, uh, it's our duty uh, to uh, make sure you have a viable business and uh, and people walking on our streets are safe and, and uh, feel good. So, uh, yeah. So we're going to be working on it. All right. All right. Thank you so much yep. for coming Thanks, down tonight. I have a question. Here. Oh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Cryer. <laughs> Sorry. Brain dead. Mr. Cryer, you have a question? I have a question to our attorney. I know on, a, on a sidewalks, public sidewalks, they can they can hang around there and, and walk back and forth and, and not be uh, subject to any uh, you know, the right to be there. But once they cross that threshold from the pro, uh, to the sidewalk with a property marked signs and no loitering on that on their on a private property, that could be considered trespassing. Where they can call and say they got somebody trespassing on their public uh, business. If they're passing into a public business and that business has the right to exclude them and they don't want them there. And they can ask them to leave or obviously contact the police if, if they need assistance. Is so signage uh, putting a sign up of some sort? There should be signage up in every business yeah. that so wants to for preserve that right. right. Mm -hmm. protects you in case something comes down. It you have a sign up that says none of this, none of this, none of this. <clears throat> yes, and you can either hang that up yourself or I've seen them commercially available. Just I've seen them at Home Depots and Lowe's before, so okay. they're widely available. So that would put the uh, business owner in a little more sure footing. If Correct. Something. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That was my question. All right. So maybe it's something that uh, again, uh, staff, we can mull it over, talk to the police department, see what. Uh, maybe we can form an ad hoc committee of some sort, and uh, I mean, we were going to look into this last year, and uh, it's not doesn't seem to be getting any better. So. All right. Uh, item number three is uh, council statements non-action. Uh, Miss Hill. Oh, uh, I just. Oh, wait a minute. Kathy. Oh, I scratched you up. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, my. You just got I'm a rookie. See, this is my first year at doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy Please Orr with the staff. Our sincere apologies, Dr. Orr. I'm, I'm very, very sorry. You missed a couple meetings. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, it's been horrible. Thank you for attending. Well, thank State you. State your name, Hi. please. My name is Kathy Oren, and I work at 400 Kern Street. And um, I'm the director of the Chamber of Commerce. And I'm just going to piggyback on Mr. Messinger's uh, statements with you, um, because we are getting, especially on days like today, we get a lot of homeless folks in. Because it's cold and it's wet, and they come in, and mostly they want to know so what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> um, we even had a gentleman join our speakers last last Wednesday <laughs> at Sit and Sip. That was kind of exciting. Um, but I I have a couple of suggestions, and uh, I, I I offered them <coughs> because I I see both sides of this issue uh, of homelessness, and uh, I think one of the issues that comes to us through businesses and through people that we just come in contact with. And that, that is the um, reception that is received uh, by the dispatcher. And I understand that dispatching can't be that much fun, um, especially if you're doing it for a while. 
but uh, I know on three occasions when I've called, I've had issues with three women, three different women in our town that I did not recognize. I've described them to the chief and the chief tells me that they are homegrown. Um, but in three cases, they were almost hit by a car. And in one of the cases, they were almost hit by me um, because they were acting very erratically and seemed to be disoriented. And I was afraid that they were going to get hit. One of them was uh, at the corner of uh, 10th and Center, and two of them were at the corner of uh, Kern and, and 10th. And um, when I explained this to the dispatcher, she says, well, how do you know she was disoriented? And I said, well, I just kind of assume that people that are wandering and in and out of cars in an intersection are disoriented. So I, I finally said to one young lady, she says, well, d are you telling me that this person is bothering you? And I said, no, they're not bothering me personally, but if you want to know in the scheme of things, is it bothering me? Yes, I'm the Chamber of Commerce. I want people to come to our town and be comfortable in it. This doesn't help my job. So that wasn't well received, by the way. So I, I think that's one of the issues, and I've heard it from more people that they feel that they have to prove their point to the dispatcher. Um, the second thing is, I think that we're all confused as citizens about what police can do. And I think if we, uh, one of the suggestions by one of the council members was if we got together and just made a, just said this is what we can do to help um, explain what, this is what law enforcement can do, this is what you as a citizen can do, this is what you as a business owner are able to do, I think that would alleviate some of the confusion because there's this feeling afoot that the police show up and then all the homeless people are going to disappear and that just, as you've mentioned, Mayor Miller, that isn't the way it is. So I think if there were more of a knowledge of what our, our responsibilities as citizens policemen's responsibilities are and so forth, that would be helpful. I, I see a huge increase and um, I understand there's a lot of reasons for it, but it, it, you know, Assembly Bill 109, nobody has had to deal with that more, well, I shouldn't say that. I've had to deal with that in many levels for the past year and it's no fun. It is a reality and until I win the lottery and can change that, <laughs> it's just going to be with us. So. That's my homeless speech, and now I'm going to switch into something more fun, which is what I usually do. Um, I want to remind everyone that we have sit and sips every Wednesday. Tomorrow we are going to hear from Donna Herman, who is in charge of Relay for Life, Taft. And if you saw the driller today, you'll know that Relay for Life is going to switch to 12 hours instead of a 24-hour Relay for Life. And there are a lot of reasons for that, and she will be telling you all about the, that switch and what's going to happen as far as the presentation for Relay for Life is, and that's coming up in May. February 11th is our chamber installation and a community awards event, and it's masks and mimosas. It's kind of a Mardi Gras theme this year. Remember, it's February 11th, which is a Thursday night. It's at the Fox Theater. And for those of you that have not heard, Businessman of the Year was named Bob Colston. Businesswoman of the Year, Sherry Hornbunk from Taft College. Business of the Year is Accelerated Environmental. Volunteer of the Year is, and you're going to have to help me out with this, the Oil Dorado Executive Board. Is that the is the executive board like five people? Several people. I don't know how many. But it's not what about? the small group. <coughs> it's the next level of group. And I, I'm sorry, I can't remember the official name. <laughs> they are the volunteers of the year. And they were named that because a lot of people are under the impression that the executive board is a paid position. And it is not. So the volunteers of the year are the 2015 Oil Dorado Board. The Community Service Award goes to Erlene and Shannon McMillan, and they've been very involved in Oil Dorado, and they're involved around Christmas time also. And then we instituted a new award this year. The award uh, will go forward, hopefully, in years to come. The Youth Leadership Award will be going to Tanner Melton, 
for his idea and his follow through on the Taft Midway Cemetery. Mm -hmm. So we're very excited about that. We will be installing our new officers. Our president, Emmanuel Campus, Campos, will be installed for the second year this time. And we're looking forward to that. So please mark your calendars. That's going to be a pretty interesting. Ex excellent event. choices. Very excellent choices. Absolutely. Yes, Thank you. Good. Thank you. We're very excited. Yeah. And remember, the members of the Chamber of Commerce each get a ballot, and they are able to vote. So this is a very broad um, source for those awards. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Appreciate it so much. Item number four, Planning Commission report. Uh, we didn't do council Robert? Statements. We have Robert Thompson with the uh, Taft City Planning Commission. Thank you, Mayor Miller and council members. <coughs> uh, we had a two items on our Planning Commission last week, <coughs> last month. Uh, one was the setting of the meeting schedules for the year, and that passed on a 4050 vote. Also, we had a planning commission work plan, which we uh, basically discussed the anticipated projects coming up before the planning commission for the next year. That's all we have. Thank you. All right, Robert, thank you so thank much. You. Well, I, I kind of messed up again and jumped over one of the items, but we're going to go to the bottom of the list on that. Item number five, department reports. Uh, don't see anybody coming forward, so uh, item six, city manager statements. Mr. Jones. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, to talk a little bit about the homeless issue and just to let everyone rest assured that if they look at the, the police log that uh, some of our homeless folks that do not want to follow the rules and the laws are repeatedly arrested and don't make it to court and then they get warrants and then they're arrested for warrants but they're turned loose again um, and we've mentioned it you know uh, AB 109 prop 47 um, that is something that's very hard to deal with um, it's a problem that's not going to be easily fixed um, so I just wanted to point that out if you look at the arrest law these folks are arrested and uh, I know for the police department, it's got to be discouraging knowing that you spend your time off the streets to put these people in jail and write reports and go to court, and they're back on the street the next day. So I just wanted to uh, point that out. Uh, a good thing is, is a consumer's uh, fair report um, stated that Taft is one of the, among the safest cities in the nation. Wow. Uh, so um, that was kind of nice to see that uh you know and our police department needs a obviously a pat on the back for that and the citizens uh as well um and uh we're coming up with a program it's kind of a pilot program we're going to see how it goes uh coffee with a cop um, is going to kick off february 11th at uh joe's restaurant at 9 a.m uh, we've invited, uh, obviously, the Taft Police Department will be there, Chief Whiting and some of his folks, Sheriff's Department, and the uh, Highway Patrol. And the uh, forum is um, a relaxed atmosphere with no agendas, no speeches, just uh, to sit around and have coffee and chit-chat and discuss issues that plague us here at the city and um, try to come up with uh, maybe resolve some of the issues. Maybe the citizens can have a better understanding of what the police officers face on a daily basis. Um, and the police officers can hear from our, our residents. Yeah, so. so get perceptions off the table and get reality mm -hmm. on it. And that's uh, yeah. be a good, good thing. So we're hoping uh, that that program, there's actually an association of the coffee with the cops. Um, it's kind of, going around uh, kind of nationwide right now. Um, so we thought we'd give it a try and see if we can better our relationship between the police officers and our citizens. So each can have a better understanding of what's going on out there. So that's all I have, Mayor, thank you. Thank you. Uh, item number seven, city attorney statements, Mr. Epperson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, no statement. Thank you. Item number three. Oh, we went from seven to three. Council statements, not action, Ms. Hill. 
I too want to piggyback a little bit more on the homeless situation. Perception is everything. And I am not the only person, I have had numerous people mention it. The dispatcher does have a way of saying, trivializing, tr making, it, making it trivial as to the fact that we have a problem. I realize that the officers are busy, and when an officer is busy, he can't come. But perhaps there might be a nicer way for our dispatcher to say, the officer is currently on a call. As soon as we can, we will send him. Well, the problem is, I have people are telling me they're not sending him. They're not sending him. And I, don't, I, and I, I know that this is an, a huge issue. These girls, I know, are working their fannies off. I know they are. They work long hours, but perception is everything. I, too, have had phone calls where I really want to pull her through the phone. And I do know how to talk to people on the phone. I do know how to ask. I know that if Dr. Oren is having this problem, it's not just me. The dispatcher is busy, but we do need to find a way to make sure that they're trained in a way to talk to people to let them know we are trying our hardest to accommodate you, but we are five officers and you have ten problems out there. It does not make you feel very secure when you don't think you can get a police officer there when you need it. And it's not just homeless situations, it's other calls when you make the phone call and they trivialize what you're doing. So maybe when we discuss this with the police officers, we can find a way to make that particular situation. I would hate for Dr. Orrin to have to pull one of those girls through the telephone. I mean, it's just not going to be a good thing. It's just not. So that's all I have. <clears throat> thank you. Mr. Bryan. Mr. Mayor, thank you. I uh, don't mean to beat the dead horse, so I won't go into too many further details, uh, but I concur wholeheartedly with many of the statements made by uh, the other council members here tonight, whether it's the homeless issue, uh, safety, homelessness, uh, etc. Uh, I would encourage people, the, the, the biggest detractor to these things is personal, vi personal vigilance. Uh, being out there and being visible, making people know that you're in the area makes them far less likely to do something that's a misdeed. So just being visible or having some sort of presence there is a detractor. Um, I would encourage people, as I always do with all the, the calls and messages I get about these issues, call. Make note of it because if the police don't know about it, they're not going to respond to it. And I appreciate everything you guys do. Um, there are many more problems than we have people to deal with uh, immediately. So there has to be some sort of triage done there, and I appreciate that. I would encourage everybody, please reach out to the police. Reach out through the coffee with a cup. I think that's a great idea. If you have further concerns, reach out to City Hall because I know that Mr. Jones here uh, and any of the staff will be happy to answer your questions if you have them. I mean, there, there's not a person here who's not willing to bend over backward for every uh, citizen or every citizen of the Taft and everybody who's in the, a citizen of the county. So please just be vigilant in your own area, report those things, and then do your best to network with your, your, your uh, law enforcement. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Cryer. Thank you, Mayor. First of all, I want to wish everybody a blessed Christmas and a happy New Year's. <laughs> and I sure did. Um, I just want to thank our police department. And everything. They're doing a hell of a good job. We've got a good award, a safe city. They're really working hard. I know it's important you know, them trying to make the peace, keep the peace with the homeless, because uh, I know they have their rights. But, you know, us as uh, citizens and property owners, we have rights too. But they are doing a great job and what they're trying to do and, and work within the means trying as a balancing act and stuff but it's important that the citizens we do call the, uh, the dispatchers and they are overworked a little bit you know we're kind of sh on a shortage in on dispatchers trying looking for new people to work in that department to uh, ease the pressure on them but it's a it's a tough job it's a balancing act and, and I really appreciate the hard work that they're doing and, and working on it but we do need to keep vigilant on the homeless and they know where their boundaries are we keep after them they'll find out you know what i'm tired of going and getting uh, getting uh, to the police station or getting a citation or having to go to court and hopefully they'll see the light hopefully um i got to remind everybody on the 28th the fort is having uh, a membership uh dinner and uh it's on a thursday starts at uh, i believe 5 p.m and i like to invite everybody to be there it's a, a good occasion to become a member there uh, this is very very inexpensive have a good meal and you're supporting one of our historic landmarks and uh, and to keep it going it's like like everything else same thing goes to transportation for the uh, the ride share and stuff we have here if we don't use it or attend to it we all lose it the mayor keeps saying like everything else the motels anything in the businesses if we don't use it enough they'll slowly go away and the money that they raise at the fort keeps the upkeep of it 
is very expensive, air conditioning, fixing the bricks, uh, electrical, um, there's a lot of expense there. As the buildings get older, it costs more cost. So uh, 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 become a member. It's very, very expensive. And, and participate and have a nice evening and uh, good music and we have some awards there. Um, I'd like to, again, to stay vigilant. You see anything out of the ordinary, call the police and uh, dispatcher and they'll take care of it. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Norr. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, First, I want, to, I want to finish the statement that the city manager made about this news release regarding the safety in the city of Taft. So I'm going to read this. It will take just a moment. New analysis by ConsumerAffairs.com shows Taft, California among the safest cities in the United States. Residents of Taft can sleep easy at night. According to a study, an interactive crime map released by ConsumerAffairs.com, Taft was recently named one of the safest cities in the nation. According to the FBI's annual report, Crime in the United States, there were more than 8.27 million property crimes in 2014, costing victims approximately $14.3 billion. Even though the estimated number of property crimes decreased 4.3% in 2014 compared to 2013, those numbers are pretty alarming. Here's the bright side. ConsumerAffairs.com analyzed FBI and Census Bureau data to create an interactive map displaying the safest cities in the United States. And their analysis showed that Taft was number five in the state for the most police officers per capita. Something this city can be very proud of. And one of the reasons, and I say it all the time, this is the safest city in the world. I can walk from one end of the city to the other end anytime, day or night, and I am quite proud of it. So I just wanted to finish reading that and piggyback on that statement, city manager. Outside of that, here recently, and I, I hear a lot of this during the uh, presidential debates, I guess it reared its ugly head during the Golden Globes. I, I don't watch the Golden Globes, so I don't know about it, but it made its way to the news. And that is racial divisions in the United States. There seems like everybody especially when you get to uh, diversity. Every, everybody, as you, every special group is looking for something. In the beginning, when a small group of people are being discriminated against, then, then the natural tendency, and rightfully so, would be to try to reverse that. What can we do to encourage that to stop? That needs to cease. And then if you identify another group, then you work just as diligently on that, and so forth and so on. But then finally you get to where we are today. I got this document, and I, and I won't tell you who I got it from, I got it from a customer, a very good customer, a very large corporation in the United States of America, uh, addressed to me, and it's regarding supplier diversity discovery. Your valued supplier. This company, we participate in both first and second tier diversity supplier programs whenever possible. In our ongoing effort to maintain our database with the required information, this company must solicit your participation in the following information. Please check any that apply. First off, are you number one, a woman-owned business? Well, no, I am not. Number two, are you a minority-owned business? Well, no, I'm not. Number three, are you a veteran service disabled veteran-owned business? I have not had the honor to serve this country in that manner. Number four, business enterprise owned by persons with disabilities. I'm fortunate enough that I am not disabled. Are you a small business enterprise? Fortunate enough that I grew just a little bit, so I'm no longer small. Are you a lesbian, gay, bisexual, and or transgender owned business? No. Wow. I am simply none of the above. So, let's take a look at that statement. If all of those people or those groups of individuals are fortunate enough that they get some special rec rec uh, recognition or treatment, <coughs> what does that leave behind? The, that's, the group left behind that's not getting special consideration continues to shrink. I will tell you what is left after all those people get special consideration. The only group not represented on this document as part of a federal, a government program, is heterosexual white males. That's it. 
everybody else in the country is fortunate enough to get some type of special recognition. Now, I love women, I always have. I guess that's why I'm not a uh, gay. That's right. But I don't think there's anything in this country a woman cannot do. I don't think there's any place a woman cannot go. Ask Carly Fiorina, at, uh, how many women do we have currently in the presidential race? I believe one on either side of the aisle. You know that West Point just appointed a female general, swore her in as commandant at West Point? Who would have thought? I don't think there's anything holding women back. As a matter of fact, I believe in our Chamber of Commerce, right here in the city of Taft, there's a woman who runs it, which brings up another issue. When the mayor and I addressed uh, the county supervisors regarding the EIR, we talked about it, as did many people. There was a African-American Chamber of Commerce representative there that supported the EIR. There was a Latino-American Chamber of Commerce representative there that supported the EIR. Would you be surprised to know that there's actually a lesbian, gay, and bisexual Chamber of Commerce? There is indeed. And you can join that as long as at least 51% of your company is owned by and controlled by a lesbian, gay, or bisexual, transgender. We have a Chamber of Commerce in the city of Taft. But I think we just call it the Taft Chamber of Commerce. And I believe that there is no exclusivity connected to being a member of the Taft Chamber of Commerce. Everybody is treated equally at the Taft Chamber of Commerce. This document, then by default, let's just say, so we have all these people who, who want special treatment. If tomorrow all of the white male heterosexuals who owned businesses quit owning businesses, or sold them to somebody. That would mean that there would no longer be a necessity to have this program at all, right? Because everybody else would get special treatment. Well, if everybody gets special treatment, then we're all getting treated the same. So nobody gets special treatment. Kind of like America, where everybody has opportunities. Everybody does. I don't believe this is any longer necessary. I believe there's a word people use to try to, to make it more palatable. It's called reverse discrimination. I don't care who you discriminate against, whether you discriminate against African Americans, Asian Americans, Latino Americans, women, people of other culture or religion, or a heterosexual white male. Discrimination is discrimination. There's no such thing as reverse discrimination. That's a bullshit word. I beg your pardon. It shouldn't exist. Wrong is wrong. This country represents the opportunity for anybody and everybody who wants to make something of themselves to be able to do it. And that has been proven now more than ever. And then finally, this document. Those of you who have not taken advantage of your Second Amendment rights and purchased a firearm aren't familiar with this. This is a firearms transaction record. And this document begins by asking you your full name, which it should. And then it asks your place of birth, your social security number, then finally right down here on item number 10, it says ethnicity. Now you're buying again a gun, you're purchasing a firearm. I don't know why this applies, but it says ethnicity. Are you Hispanic or Latino or not Hispanic or Latino? Those are your two options, check one. <laughs> then in the next box, 10B, they're gonna ask you about your race. Are you an American Indian? Alaskan Native, Asian, Black or African American, Native Hawaiian, other Pacific Islander, or finally, are you white? Then way down on the bottom of this document, it gets around to asking you right there, right down here, the bottom. Number 14, what is your country of citizenship? Are you an American citizen? Down at the very bottom. Why don't they ask you that at the top? I believe it should say, are you an American citizen? If not, please return this document to the rightful owner. Have a nice day. <coughs> Why do they need to know if you're Hispanic, non-Hispanic, or the race? What has that got to do if you were gonna legally purchase a firearm in the United States of America as long as you're a citizen? 
So, to end that, I believe if you're an American, you're a fortunate individual indeed. No matter what else you have, no matter what name by which you call God, no matter what sex you are or what your sexual preference is or what color your hair, your eyes, or your skin is, you are fortunate you're an American. I think that should be label enough for any of us. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Norton. God bless the USA. Uh, I think we've got some consensus about the issue with the dispatchers. So I'm sure that uh, Mr. Jones is going to be addressing that issue with our HR director and our chief of police. So that uh, maybe that's some some issue area of the city that we can work on for uh, improve our community. Uh, uh, communications. So. Um, also, it's nice to know uh, that our police department is doing their job, um, unheralded sometimes, but now we don't have to say we're the safest city in the county. I mean, we just jumped from the county right to the nation, and we got picked out from somewhere. I mean, you know, there's a whole lot of cities in the United States, and we got named, I don't know, we're in the top Top five, and that's based on FBI reports and consumer. For city size, I guess, or something. But anyway, that is something that we should be bragging about, and we will be bragging about. And Ms. Uh, Oren uh, with the Chamber, I'm sure now you'll be saying more, not county, we're uh, nationwide. So, um, and that goes to the hard work of, of our men and women of, of the Taft Police Department. And we have a sergeant representative pleased to hear tonight and thank you sir thank you for your service <coughs> item number eight future agenda requests anybody have a future agenda request well we did kind of discuss you know maybe some kind of a workshop you had mentioned that something that we can do to the citizens is be find ways to work on the homeless situation what we can and can't do what the police can and can't do maybe people need to have a better idea. I have a, able I'll, to do. I'll, you know, I'll have, uh, give you a consensual vote on that. A consensus. I'm not consensual. Consensus. Uh, Mr. Jones, uh, maybe you can come back to us with <coughs> in the next couple of weeks. Let us uh, see if we have some thoughts on that from staff, and uh, maybe we could have a public meeting or something and just address these issues. Um. Have one on yeah. be on a safety committee. Would that fall in line with the safety committee for about the homeless? Do we have a we have pre meeting <coughs> or a, or follow up meeting or somewhere in the, in the balance in there? Mm. Yeah, we could do it through the safety committee. Huh? Invite some guests. Mm -hmm. Invite some guests. Yep. Are you on the safety committee? Yes, sir. I believe. Well, uh, the only problem with the safety committee is it's more the closed thing. This lease was on television; people can see it. Less people are going to see it if it's in a well, safety you can committee. Well, you have, <laughs> have, have your meeting anywhere you want. It's, right. a, it's a public. It's a public. Uh, yeah, the two, big thing two is two people on the safety committee. And we have outside people. No, I mean two council members. Yes. I'm okay. on the safety. It's, it's a that's council. a public. It's a council that's a public committee. meeting. So. Standing committee. Yeah, I just want people to, to if, if indeed, and it's true, perception is everything, people need to see that we're making efforts. One of the big comments you hear a lot is, oh, they're just dumping homeless people off in this town. And when I spoke to the chief about that, he says, get a picture of it, because we don't know. And so things like that need to be said. Well, if they're dumping people off, let's, are we seeing it? Is it real? Is it, is it just hearsay? So I, I think that maybe we can clear up some of the perceptions. Well, since we already have the safety committee, the uh, and you're on the safety committee, Ms. Yeah. Hill and Mr. Cryer. Maybe you can work with uh, Mr. Jones and maybe we could have something set up. Okay, let's <coughs> do it that way. All right, uh, moving on to item 9 through 19 is the consent calendar. All items listed on the consent calendar shall be considered routine and will be enacted by one roll call vote. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a member of the city council requests specific items to be removed from the consent calendar for separate action. Any item removed from the consent calendar will be considered after the regular business items. Are there any items on the consent calendar that any member of the public would like to comment on? I believe they all left. All right, here we go. Item number nine, minutes of the December 15th uh, regular meeting and a December 17th special meeting. 
Item 10, payment of bills. Item 11, duct cleaning of, uh, of the air, heating and air conditioning systems at City Hall. And that's a motion to approve $10,440 from the general fund. Item 12, professional services agreement with graphic solutions for citywide sign program and wayfinding. And that's a, a motion to approve $9,750 from the general fund. Item 13, revised long range property management plan. <coughs> Item 14, renewal of the Taft City Schools Resource Officer MOU uh, to be authorized by the city manager and the police chief. Item 15, proposal for economic development services from HDL, and that is for an additional $10,000 from the general fund. Item 16, planning director to attend the American Planning Association's 2016 National Planning Conference in Phoenix, Arizona, April 2nd through the 5th, 2016, and with approved expenses up to $835. You can go to Phoenix for $835. All right. <coughs> Item 17, professional services agreement with Radeon Design Group, Inc., for Taft Transit Center. And that's in amount not to exceed $32,010. Item 18, finance and human resource staff to attend Tyler Muniz, Muniz 2016 annual training in Phoenix, Arizona on May 1st through May 5th. And that's our uh, <coughs> finance system, uh, the computer system that we operate here through the uh, city. And uh, I don't see an, an amount attached to that. Item 19, application to the San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District uh, in regards to electric vehicle charging station grant. So there's item 9 through 19. The city, city council member wish to remove an item. Pull 11 and 14. 11 and 14. 11 and 14. <laughs> right. Okay, so we're going to vote on uh, our entertain a motion to approve. Item 9, 10, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Motion. Second. Have a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, will you take roll call, please? Council Member Knorr? Yes. Council Member Cryer? Yes. Council Member Bryant? Yes. Council Member Hill? Yes. And Mayor Miller? Uh, yes. Uh, we move to item 11, duct cleaning of the heating and air conditioning system at City Hall. Mr. Jones. Thank you, Mayor. An inspection of the duct, duct work and exhaust for the for the heating and air conditioning system at City Hall shows extensive amount of dust buildup as well as torn fiberglass that needs to be cleaned. Staff recommends entering into an agreement with duct cleaning professional duct cleaning services that are needed. The estimated costs include the preparation and covering of the furniture and equipment throughout the cleaning of all the ducts, encapsulating all internal fiberglass services, and facility cleanup is $10,440. Work will be scheduled during the days that City Hall is closed to avoid disruptions during regular business hours. Professional duct cleaning company recently completed similar work at the Taft Modified Community Correctional Facility in a satisfactory manner. Okay, we have a um, motion to enter into a professional services agreement with Graphic Solutions for the Taft Citywide Oh, wait, I'm reading the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Items, item up here, item yeah. 11. Motion to approve duct cleaning of the heating and air conditioning systems at City Hall and authorize the city manager to sign the agreement for services with professional duct cleaning company. I need a motion. Motion. Second. Mr. <coughs> uh, Cryer, you had a question on this. Yeah, item. a couple of questions. Is it the first time the ducts ever been cleaned? To my knowledge. You know, <laughs> it's been a long time then. What prompted it? Is, is the dust blowing or something? Um, actually, office staff here has a lot of allergies mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, respiratory illnesses. That contributed uh, to the inspection? Well, we that contributed to us having a look-see in the duct work and uh, because Pretty it's nasty, never huh? been... Yeah, so yeah. Uh, needs, uh, needs some uh, attention. What this company does is they use a system to brush and clean all the duct work and then they actually coat it with a coating that way the stuff doesn't stick to it anymore so are we going to do any duct work or any 
AC or heating in the future here, in the near future, in our in the city hall? Well, <clears throat> the problem we have with the current air conditioner is is the cost when that uh, air conditioner was placed. I believe the uh, appreciation on it was about 35 years. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, City Hall was built in the 70s. So. Yeah, well, this, this air conditioner was put in in, uh, I believe, early 2000, but it was at the cost of over half a million dollars, so we're kind of stuck with it. That's all I have. All right. Any other discussion on this item? <coughs> uh, Madam Clerk, will you take roll call, please? Council Member North? Yes. Council Member Cryer? Yes. Council Member Bryant? Yes. Council Member Hill? Yes. And Mayor Miller? Yes, and that passes on a 5 0 vote. And I might add the items 9 through 19 that we've voted on passed <laughs> on a 5 0 vote. Uh, item number 14 renewal of the Taft City Schools Resource Officer MOU. Mr. Jones. Thank you. The MOU for the School Resource Officer needs to be renewed. For a full-time paid police officer at the Taft City School District, the contract provides for continued use police officer for the Taft Police Department at the Taft City School District. The cost for the contract is in the amount of $110,000. This contract renewal has been reviewed by the City Attorney and by our Risk Management Group. The MOU has already been approved and signed by the Taft City School District. Uh, so the motion uh, recommendation is I accept a motion to approve the MOU and authorize city manager and police chief to sign. Motion. motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Mr. Pryor, you had a question? I just want to acknowledge that uh, it's been a great partnership between the city of Taft and the Taft school system for providing the resource officer there. And not only it pays for itself, you know, for a truancy, you know, the, the, truancy the, the school gets paid each day for each student at 10 school. And our officers are there <laughs> making sure that they all show up. If they're not there, they go into their house and uh, yank them out of bed. I don't know what they normally do, but <laughs> how they do it, but they make sure they attend. And the crime and interaction with the with the students and stuff has made a very positive influence on, on, our, on our young citizens that go to the school. And I just want to recognize uh, the police department and the well job, the job that they're doing with them in the school district. And um, it's not, it's not uh, schools actually making money and we're having a safer community. If you have kids not going to school, they're out there causing a little bit of mischief and uh, you know, it is where we grew up. But anyway, I just want to acknowledge the, the, the city of Taft and uh, the good work that we're doing in this Taft uh, school district for the job that they're doing and making Taft a better community through that. All right. Thank you, Mr. Pryor. Any <coughs> other? Discussion on this subject? No. You know, Mr. Mayor, I might add, yep. it's not all negative, the, the officer being there to, to reduce negativity. Uh, I'm amazed at the report, uh, as Mr. Cryer said, that the officer builds with the kids. Uh, my son, he, he's no angel, but he definitely doesn't get in trouble at school. But it's amazing if, uh, how funny it is to hear him come home and talk about the interactions they have with Officer Martinez at school. Uh, they think he's a, he's a cool guy, but it also helps build that relationship when they become older citizens. The kids aren't going to be scared of the police or fearful of what might happen. They're fearful of breaking the law the way it should be. And I appreciate that very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Madam Clerk, will you take a roll call, please? Council Member North? Yes. Council Member Cryer? Yes. Council Member Bryant? Yes. Council Member Hill? Yes. And Mayor Miller? Yes. And that passes on a 5 0 vote. We've come to the end of our meeting and we'll be going into closed session on two items. Item A, conference with legal counsel and antici anticipated lit litigation. Government Code Section 54956.9B, two potential cases. Item B, conference with labor negotiator Craig Jones. City Manager, Government Code, 54957.6, all units. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your...